All right, we're ready to get started today, right? We're gonna we're gonna paint. We're gonna we're gonna do some painting, like some real painting, right? No, no real. What are we What are we doing? We we gotta we gotta prime the over the over the prime coat. What? Today we're gonna talk about pre highlighting. Welcome back. Uh, today, we're going to talk about a really fun way to paint called pre-highlighting. Uh, you may know it as zenithal highlighting or a million other names that people have given to it, but at its root, it is pre-highlighting. What do we mean by that? Uh, it's the idea of taking a primed model uh, that you have primed in a dark color, black in this case, um, and then applying a lighter coat over the top, generally whites or light grays, to start building up highlights on the model to represent where you want your lighting to be coming from. Uh, this method can be used for lots of different things later on down the road in your model. Uh, the primary two, I would say, are as a, uh, a kind of a, uh, a guiding light, so to speak, uh, to let you know where a model's brighter colors should go. Uh, it would be a great idea to do the pre-highlight we're about to do, take a photo of it on your phone, keep that photo as you start painting so that you can see how light would fall given the lighting direction you've chosen. Um, the uh, second big thing that you can do with it is actually use that brightness that you put on the model as an undercoat for applying things like uh, light glaze and filter layers of color over the top so that you can speed up your painting process. So you've got a bright layer, a dark layer from the original primer coat that was on there. And then you can put over a, like on this guy, a thin coat of skin tone, uh, thin coats of brown for his cloak, his fur coat, uh, boots, uh, you know, grays for the hammerhead, uh, ivories for the horns. And you can paint very quickly because the white pre-highlight and the black original primer layer are generating all of your contrast. So it allows you to get color on the model very quickly to generate that contrast. And then you can either be ready for the table right then, or you can use that as your base coat that has a lot more dynamic uh, visual to it, and then start building up your highlights and textures off of that with more complicated brush strokes. Um, so let's get to it. Uh, on a model like this, he's about a 75 millimeter model. I generally like to start with a gray tone first. So we're gonna use dark neutral gray. It's a little bit of a darker gray, but it's still going to be brighter than our black primer layer. So what we want to do, just like regular priming, we want to just go directly into the brush with the primer. You don't need as much because you're not covering the whole model. And the biggest thing to think about is how you want your light to fall on this guy. Um, in this case, he's kind of looking at us like this, right? Marching at us, ready to bash our skulls in with his huge hammer, okay? So a good lighting direction on a model like this is going to be just kind of face on. He's at a three, kind of a, you know, a three quarter pose anyway. He's not just standing straight and staring at you. So in a lot of cases, it's going to be important to look at the model, evaluate how you want it to look before picking your lighting direction. Like I said, I'll just kind of rotate them around. Uh, lighting on this side kind of doesn't make a lot of sense unless you have something specific in mind because there's not a lot of his detail there. This is really the money shot where he's staring at us uh, and, and uh, displaying his bravado and anger. So what I want to do is I want to get my airbrush aiming as if it were my light source. So let's just assume that this is the sun outside or the moon outside. So it's going to be, you know, up at, say, 10 uh, or at 2 are my favorite angles to tell people. So you got 2 o'clock on the dial here, 10 o'clock on the dial here. Those are your good starting points. Um, that's what we're going to do here. 
So we're just going to take that gray. We're going to have our airbrush again at about four to six inches away from the model up at about 10 o'clock. And we're just going to start doing a quick coating of gray. You can go full volume on this. You don't have to do a thin coat. You can just throw gray at the model. Okay. And you start seeing how we're lighting up those details, the tops of the muscle groups, his forehead, these horns, everything that the light can hit from this direction. Now, it's imperative that you only keep your airbrush angled at this same angle as much as you can, right? You can move the airbrush lower, but you keep the same angle. You can move it higher to get the top of the model, but keep that same angle. If you alter the angle as you spray, you're going to delete the shadows that you're creating that your black primer has left underneath the gray you just shot. So be very careful when doing this type of painting that you keep your angle. So if you need to get that foot down there, keep the angle, just move the brush closer down towards the area of the foot and spray like that. First kind of nature is going to be that you rotate the brush. You're going to want to aim at the foot. As soon as you do, all of that nice shadow we've created goes away because now you're spraying paint directly into it. So keep your angle here, that 10 o'clock, kind of 45 degrees off of top dead center on the model kind of thing. Right? Keep that no matter how you rotate the model, no matter where the brush is along the length of the model or height. Okay? We're going to do that. We're going to get this primary view of the model done this way. Okay, so we've got a good one from this direction. We also want to look at the rest of the model too, right? Because light isn't just from a single direction. It diffuses. We're going to take that same angle and we're going to paint the back on the cloak here. Same rules apply. Keep that angle. Get the inside of the leg on the back there. Let it fall off into darkness as it gets completely over here because this would be the dark side of the model. Now, I'm going to go ahead and dust a little bit, keeping the same kind of 10 o'clock angle, right? But now we've got a good coat. We look like we still have a pure black model from underneath. From the top, we've got that gray shining through really nicely. Top of the fur cloak a little bit more. Top of the hammer. Right? So that's a good setup. That gray and black work very well together to give us kind of our mid-tone shadows. Nothing falls directly into a black now, which is going to be uh, kind of <laughs> noticeable if you just spray white over the top of black. So there we've got a nice gray coat. I'll clean this airbrush and we'll get back for some white. Okay, once the airbrush is cleaned, we now go in, we get some white Pro Acryl Prime. Just like the gray, we just want to put some directly into the pot there. Make sure I get all of that white Flowing good. And now, same thing, same direction, that 10 o'clock direction, same four to six inches away. Now I'm going to want to lightly dust, and I'm going to want to stay generally above the hips as I start the model, okay? You don't want to get a whole lot of white down low because you're going to overtake that nice mid-tone gray highlight that we've got going on. So again, same direction, and we're going to start with just a light dusting. And when I say dusting, it means just barely pull back on the trigger. Don't go too much down below the waist. Now we start seeing light show up as if it were a real light. And rotate the model around, same 10 o'clock direction regardless. Top of that hammerhead. Right around the back here, same direction, same angle. Back of that other leg. And that light dusting over the top of that existing gray becomes just a light gray. We're not to pure white yet because we're just feathering it over the top. It allows all of that gray to still have an impact, right? But now it starts giving us an actual lighting. Feels like real light, okay? Once we've done that, we can kind of scope it out. Maybe you want a little bit of highlight on this leg. A lot of times what I will do is I will rotate the model and stare directly down as if I am the kind of eye of God here. And I'll just do a light dusting at a downward angle, kind of brighten up that leg just a little bit. You don't always want to be shooting for realism, right? Uh, when we're painting models, the, the real goal here is enough contrast to make it look good, whether on the table playing games or just to the discerning eye up on a shelf for display. Uh, either one is great, but contrast is king. So even though this side might not want to be too bright, I might want to pick out a little bit of brighter dusting on here, just so that those muscle groups and textures on the model start showing up a little, okay? 
So now we've got a good initial lighting. This is our main source of light, moonlight, sunlight, whatever you decide, torch light in a cave, doesn't matter. Here's our normal light. It's coming off of his right shoulder onto his right cheek. And here's our secondary light. This is bouncing off of a cave wall or just the environment around him is giving a little bit of brightness back on this. You don't have to get too detailed. You don't have to worry too much about the physics of light. You just got to remember to keep your angle the same all the time, right? So that no matter how you're painting at the model, you're trying to paint from the same 10 o'clock angle or very close to it. Like I said uh, before, if you want to get something brighter down on the feet, don't do this and spray the feet. Keep that same angle and just lower the brush down along the height of the model, right? that you can do this and you can get just a little bit of brightness on the outstep of his foot if you want, okay? Now that that's dried, come back again, same angle. We stopped at the hip before. Now we wanna stop at the shoulders, okay? So here we're gonna get in a little bit closer to the model. So we've been doing this at about four to six inches away like this. Now we're gonna close that gap to about one to two inches, right? Same feathering. So I'm not pulling the trigger super hard. I don't wanna blast the model with a ton of paint. I just wanna get in here and I wanna kinda just quickly Pulse the brush. Right. So now I've got his forehead, top of the hammer, all the things that are at shoulder level or up. I might want to get a little bit of his pecs there, maybe a little bit of his gut, the bicep. Pick out those points, but don't drop too low. Because if you keep this bright white going too low, you've now upset all the balance of light as it goes down. Okay. So again. Just kind of looking, probably want to get this horn over here a little bit more. Match the hammer. The idea being that if you go this bright at the top of the hammer, everything at that same height that the light can hit would be at an equal brightness. His forehead, right? The horn over there, top of this horn, uh, this horn over here, obviously, would also be very bright. This one. And then just keep working it. Top of the fur cloak. Skull embedded in there, because why not? Get a little light going down his gut and his pecs. Right. So now we have this bright white turning into a brighter gray, turning into a darker gray, and eventually into black. Okay. Now, depending on the model and its shape and what you want to see, you might want to come in and do a little bit more down here so that you can get a little bit of detail on those skulls that are on his loincloth. That's up to you, right? Again, we want to rotate the model around, taking the white at the same angle, right? And just making sure we get the top of the cloak back here as well. The horns hanging out. I stay up by that shoulder again. But notice how I'm not being as aggressive rotating the model around, hitting it at every angle. I also want to have shadows created. Notice how his head will cause a shadow on that horn back there. I don't want to rotate this and try to get brightness down here, even though that's a shoulder, because his head is going to block that. Right? So that gives me a really nice shadow on this side of the model. And you can just continue doing this to create as bright and uh, dynamic a light as you want, or you can feather it more and get more brightness down low, and you can make it more like just being outside in normal sunlight. Normal sunlight won't create a tremendous amount of contrast. It kind of diffuses everything together. It's up to you. You get to just play around with it. It's one of the funnest ways to set up the initial look of your model without having to do it in color. You can do this very simple pass with gray and white. You can kind of see, does that light work? Is that going to be the model I want to see? Or should I have done it over on this side? I think for now, that's a really good color. Right? Really good lighting setup there. Again, I might want a little bit of brightness down this side. So just like before, right? rotate it, point straight down on it almost. I'm going to stay up here by the shoulders. Just get a little bit of glow going on that arm. A little bit down on the leg, too. Okay. Now you've got a really nicely set up pre-highlight that can be used in a lot of different ways, like we talked about. I can use this and take a photo of it on my phone or with a camera, keep that photo available to where I can look at it at any time as a reference point as I'm painting the model. If I plan to just use opaque paint and cover all of this pre-highlight up, this is still a very good frame of reference for me as I go. I can always turn around, look at it, because I'm going to maybe base coat his skin with a brighter flesh color that's going to get rid of all my lighting. Go and look at the picture. I can tell where I need to put my shadows back on, where I need to put my highlights back on, because it will always be like this in that frame that you caught, right? Or 
using a light wash or filter of paint, you can start using like our transparents. You can start fil uh, filtering down with our glaze and wash medium, and you can start putting flesh tones over this and your bright whites, your mid-tone grays, and your blacks will show through that filter layer and give you all that initial contrast. Very, very quick way to paint. Great way to get models on the table fast, right? So there you go. A great way to do pre-highlighting. Very, very simple. Once you get used to it, you'll be doing it in no time. It won't seem like it's a hassle to do it, even if you don't plan to do a, a, a kind of a, a fast speed paint type method. Just being able to take that reference photo. Uh, more and more so when you decide to use it for custom light sources. I say custom. More dramatic light sources like an uplight. Something that doesn't necessarily work with your brain as easily as top-down lighting. We're used to, in the world around us, all the lighting is generally top-down. It's very rare that you spend a lot of time looking at light coming from the ground up. But in our world of fantasy and science fiction, a lot of times we want to create a really cool dynamic light source that tells more of a story than just generic top-down lighting. So this is a great way to do that. Same method that I used over there. We just did this ahead of time. And instead of the 10 or 2, I basically picked whatever the heck this would be, right? five and seven <laughs> on the on the dial, right? And you're just painting from that worm's eye view. So you wanna make sure that you only see bright color from bottom up in this case, right? And that from top down, we're back to our shadows, right? Because we've reversed all of our lighting. Something like this, great idea to take a picture of it because it's very easy to get your brain back into the light comes from the top, shadows are on the bottom. So always have a good reference point to come back to. And you can knock this out. It takes a couple of minutes, even including cleaning the airbrush to get a really nice job um, so that you can create dynamic lights from the side, uh, from up like this, from a, a radiating glow from an ax head or a flame in someone's hand. You can treat anything you want as the light source. Just keep your airbrush pointed at the model from wherever that light source would be and don't change that angle. I've said it about a hundred times. That's the biggest thing here. All of my shadows stay where I want them when I keep that angle the same throughout, okay? Two good references. Now, when doing smaller models, the only thing I change is that I typically will not use the layer of gray. I will just go straight to white. Um, a bigger model like this, the gray has a higher impact because you have more surface area for the gray to be visible on, and you can retreat your white into, like I said, just the head and shoulders, uh, or the waist area, and you're going to get that transition a lot better. Uh, on a smaller model, uh, a lot of times the gray is just a waste. Uh, you can do it to where it works really well. You're going to spend more time on it, um, but you can just feather that first layer of white, and it actually gives you a pretty good gray over the top of the black if you're just really careful and just lightly dust the model with the white first, then come back with the head and the shoulders like this. So either way is very, very good. A little bit more dynamic lighting when you get the models bigger, but you can still pull off some really, really cool stuff on small models like this. Uh, be able to, again, take the reference photo or just take a filter layer like this same way and paint this guy really, really quick. All right, there you go. Any questions you got, leave them down in the comments below. See you next time.